There's no more compelling storyline in BYU sports than a new head coach and a quarterback battle. Yeah. That's how it goes. That's what we had in spring. BYU did not name a starter. But uh, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann. Let's bring in the winningest quarterback in BYU history to discuss that situation and many others. Max Hall now joins the program from Queen Creek, Arizona. Max, welcome back to the show. How you doing, man? Shoot, better now that I'm on the show with you guys. You know, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me. Let's go. It was fun to watch you uh, do your thing in the alumni game. And hey, no injuries this year, which was great. I traded the injury for an interception. So, I mean, I don't know what's worse, <laughs> but uh, I had a great time. Uh, it was awesome with the with Steve Young showing up, getting a Steve Young appearance and hanging out with him for a little bit and seeing the guys. So I thought it was a success. I, I will perform better next year. I can promise you that. Hey, there was a sequence <laughs> in the third quarter. Ty came out and drove his team down through a touchdown pass, and then you came out and drove your team down and threw a touchdown pass. So you get Steve Young and, and you back-to-back -to -back touchdowns uh, in front of BYU fans. I mean, you couldn't script a, a better moment. Yeah, that was pretty cool for us to both come back in the second half and have touchdown drives. And I think both of us after that were like, we're done. You guys finished the game like we're good right here. So um, just being down there and, and just hanging out in warm-ups and throwing pat and go with Steve and just hamming it up a little bit. You know, I've, I've never really done that with him. I've, I've been around him a lot, but it was cool seeing him in that setting and actually watching him. He's still got I me. Mean, look at him right there. He's still got it. He's got a nice release. Look at the touch on that ball. I mean, still one of the legends, man. One of the greatest of all time right there. He looked off the defense like a safety. I swear. He looked to the right on purpose, and then threw. And then his like Rudy moment was great, uh, which was really fun. Um, what's the what's the future of this event like, in your opinion? Um, because it continues to be successful and a ton of fun. I hope it keeps going. I really do. Um, uh, obviously, I think it's better when we do it in the stadium, and hopefully next year everything's in order for us to do that. It was still a great experience over there at the high school, but. I would like to try to get a little, some more guys involved. You know, I feel like uh, we kind of have the same guys showing up. Um, I want to see if we can expand that a little bit and um, get some more guys out there who maybe haven't been there uh, to make it a little bit more fun. So um, I, I hope it keeps going. Um, part, the best part of it for us players is getting to come back and be around each other, um, getting to be around the coaches and the players and watching practice and um, immediately – when, when I ever come back, man, I feel at home. Uh, I, I feels right. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it is home. So I want to I want to keep doing it. And uh, I don't get to get up there very often. So um, I hope it continues and, and we uh, kind of get a better showing in years to come. Max, after that game, uh, we watched you visit with Jake Retzlaff. Uh, for Jake, that was big for him to be able to talk to you because you've been so successful up here. Uh, and then also Gary Bohannon uh, from earlier in the day. These two are in a quarterback battle. How do you see this thing playing out? That's a good question. And I really, you know, I had a chance to talk to A-Rod and some of the other coaches and kind of get a feel of how things have been going on. And then, yeah, like you said, after the alumni game, I, I think, uh, uh, shoot, we were out there chatting for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes after that game. And um, I, I, I like him. I like Jake a lot. Like, I think he's, you know, I hear a lot of people are saying that he kind of reminds them of me, kind of that same fieriness, competitiveness, um, the will to win sort of a thing. So I, I became a fan when I was there. And I, I want to kind of be able to be a, some sort of a mentor or do everything I can for the kid. Now, Bohannon, he looked good too. He's obviously got a great skill set. And um, I know he was still kind of coming back from some injuries, but I thought those two in particular stood out and looked pretty good. Um, but I, I'm a Jake fan. Like, I, I, I think he's got it. I think he can put it together. And, you know, after the experience he had last year, hopefully he learned from that and he can put it together because if, if he does end up being the starter, I think there's some high expectations at that position this year. And, um, but I have confidence that both those guys are capable of doing it. You were in your own QB battle in 2007, beat out uh, Cade Cooper and Brendan Gaskins. You were named the starter at the end of spring ball, kind of in this situation. In this case, BYU did not name a starter because I legitimately think, uh, you know, they need more time, more reps to see who's going to be the guy. What are the pros and cons of that, um, being naming a starter after spring versus, uh, 
not knowing who the guy's quite yet until fall camp, given that you've been through this? Um, I, I liked it when I was playing. I liked it that they named me the starter after spring ball because it gave me a certain mindset and a certain confidence going into the off-season workouts during the summertime and preparing myself um, for fall camp, you know, knowing that I was going to be the guy and kind of it, it was my team and I needed to get my guys ready to play and the, the entire team ready. It just puts a certain mindset instead of like, um, okay, there's still a battle going on. We're not sure who it's going to be still competition, which competition is good, but I also believe that there's some benefit in kind of knowing you're the guy. And and I think there's a different attitude that comes with that. So um, totally understandable why they didn't, if it's, if it's that close of a battle. Um, I would hope that as soon as possible when you get to fall camp, they get a starter named. And so that guy can really mentally prepare himself to start the season. Max, now that you're a football coach, what's the upside from the coach's perspective to have these two guys battling it out for the next five months? Well, they're going to make each other better. I think that's obvious. And anytime there's competition, that creates um, uh, a higher intensity. Everybody needs to kind of step it up, uh, take it to the next level. And it just it creates better players. Um, so competition is always good. Um, but kind of like I said, I think sooner rather as soon as possible, they need to, to get the guy named, get the starter going. But uh, I was able to sit in the quarterback room. I was able to be out at practice and, and be close and, and listen to how they interact. And I can tell you it's a great quarterback room. I love how they treat each other. They're supportive. Um, they still give each other a hard time and talk a little bit of trash. But at the end of the day, you can tell they care about each other. And as a collective group, they want that position to be great. So whoever ends up being the guy, I feel like everybody else will support him, and we want to be great at that position. So um, I really like the group, and I like the guys, and it's going to be fun to see kind of who rises to the top. And the reality is there's a strong likelihood that both will be needed at some point, whether there's injuries or ineptitude, and so you've, you've got to be ready even if you're not the Southern Illinois starter. Yeah, and, and I actually think I heard a comment from A-Rod saying that, that there's a good chance we might need both of these guys during the season, which is true. I mean, playing in the conference that we're in now, playing against good teams, you know, nicks and nacks and injuries are going to happen, and I think it's going to be good to have another guy, you know, behind whoever the starter is who is very capable of going in and playing um, if something does happen. So both both guys are athletic. They like to get out of the pocket. They like to run. So, you know, obviously they need to protect their bodies because we would rather have a consistent starter. But maybe A-Rod has an idea with some different packages or, or different things that he can do to kind of highlight each one's skill set. Um, A-Rod's smart guy. He'll figure that out going in. But I think he's right. There's a chance we could, we could end up playing both of them and we kind of see what, what happens and we go from there. Max, considering how the game has changed from when you played to now you're coaching high school there in Arizona to this idea of a super league, which we were talking about a few minutes ago, an idea that's been floated around uh, yesterday uh, around the country of the eventual creation of a 70, 80 conference league, whatever, uh, of, of the P5 schools with, with a couple of add-ons moving forward in college football. Do you see that kind of a future or does that seem a little extreme? I don't know, to be honest with you. Like, there's so much change and stuff going on in college football. I think they're just trying to figure it out so ideas like these are being thrown around. And bottom line, I just think they need a bigger playoff. You know, however they want to structure that, if they want to do a super conference or whatever, I just think there's there's more teams that deserve to be in a playoff at the end of the year. So if you got to create a super conference to create that competition or or that setting, Great. You know, this is the first I've heard of it. Honestly, I didn't hear the news yesterday. So maybe it could be a good idea. But at the bottom line for me, I'd like to see, you know, more teams at the end of the season have an opportunity to compete for a national championship. Do you want a 16 team playoff or what are you hoping for? Yeah. Yeah, at least I, I think I think I think all you know, you look at the end of every college football season, you always kind of have your three or four powerhouses that end up making the college football playoff. But I think in the top 20, there's sleepers in there. And you never know who could who could have a great game and, and beat a Georgia or, or Michigan or an Alabama, whatever. 
So I think they deserve a shot to go to the playoffs, man. It's playoff football. Instead of just taking the top four every year, and I don't like how they do it anyway, let's take 16 teams at least and give them a shot to go play. I just think college foot that would make college football better. I think it would make it more exciting. And so I'd like to see something like that in the future. Let's talk about Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall. They're both in unique situations now. Zach uh, is still with the Jets and needs to find a new suitor or he's going to stay with the Jets. Jaron's with the Vikings. Their starters moved on to Atlanta. Uh, and now the Vikings are talking about uh, drafting another quarterback. Uh, what's the future hold for these two? Just my opinion without knowing all the details of, of where these guys are or where the organizations are at, I think it would benefit Zach to get out of New York. I, I do. I think it would benefit him to go to another team um, and just kind of get a fresh start in the NFL and have a different opportunity um, with different teammates, different coordinator, all that. Um, for Jaron, I hope he stays. Um, I, even if they end up drafting a quarterback, um, Jaron – I think is talented enough to be a starter in the league and deserves another opportunity. I think he was doing well until the injuries hit and it just kind of went from there. But I think both are capable and both just need to be given the right opportunity and stay healthy. So yeah, I think, I think Zach should find a new home and I think Jaron should stay and be given a chance to compete and become the starter there. Even if they draft a quarterback, you competed against Viking head coach, Kevin O'Connell. Did you not at San Diego state? Yeah, we played against each other. That's right. And uh, a mem yeah. memorable fake spike at the end of uh, uh, the first half to get a touchdown, I think, if I recall. Yeah, Ke Kevin's a great dude. He was a super talented quarterback, man. He could chuck it around and uh, very smart. Obviously, that's why he's he's coaching at the level he's coaching at. But, no, that, that was a funny story. Real quick, you know, we're driving down. The first half's winding down. We have no timeouts. We call a run play. It gets stuffed on the one yard line. And so coach and I calls QB sneak. So it wasn't a spike. It was actually, we called it Chevy. It was mm. QB sneak. And when I got up there to run the QB sneak, I, I swear I saw 20 guys in both a gaps, you know, like, I'm like, I'm not going anywhere right here. So at the last minute, I just made a gut decision to, you know what? I'm just going to take off, run to the left, and maybe I get in. And everybody pinched down like I thought, and I and I snuck into the left pylon and was able to score. So kind of one of those intuition things that just, you know, worked out. Like it could have gone really bad the other way, but it ended up working <laughs> out. So, <laughs> Hey, Max, one of the great dramas of Arizona sports is going to unfold this fall when you go against Ty Detmer uh, as your two new high schools collide. You're still at a ALA at Queen Creek. Ty has moved over to another team. And so instead of longtime assistance, you're now going head to head. How's that going to work out? I feel bad for Ty. I really do. <laughs> that he's got to go with me. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I No, I, I love Ty Detmer. Um, he's become a very good friend. He's become a mentor. Um, and coaching with him was an absolute blast, and, and I learned a lot from him. Um, you know, not not just X's and O's, but, you know, him just being there on game day and giving me reminders during the game and talking me through things and, and um, watching him be a head coach and how he treated the coaches and the players. Um, he's just he, he's one of the greatest guys I've ever been around, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss Ty. Uh, it's going to be fun coaching against him. Uh, the problem is, is we know each other probably a little bit too well, so it's going to be a chess match of, uh, of knowing each other and, and how we think offensively. But um, uh, it, it'll be fun to go against him. But at the same time, it, it's kind of sad that we're not together anymore. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed my time with him. But y you know me, though. I, I'll shake his hand after the win and tell him good job, and, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> Congrats on all the quarterbacks uh, you've been producing, by the way. It feels like every year there's somebody, and, and obviously there's BYU ties uh, to this. So uh, it's a little QB factory there you got going in, at ALA Queen Creek. I'm trying, man. We've had some really good players been coming through the program the last few years. And, you know, I had uh, a few years ago, I had Logan Hubler, who actually is now running track at BYU. He's, he's a high hurdler, runs a four by one. He's doing really well at track up there. After him, Drew Cowart, he's on his mission right now. He's got a PWO, so he'll be up there soon. 
And then everybody knows Enoch Watson right now, who got the scholarship offer and committed. And he was up there with us um, for that alumni game in spring ball. And it was fun watching him interact and, and uh, be around. So um, all are great kids. You know, I, I just, I coach them as hard as I can, but you know, you have to give credit to them and the hard work they put in and they deserve an opportunity to, to be up there and compete. So I'm excited for all of them. Shout out to Drew. I've known him since he was a little kid because my, my wife is from uh, the same ward as his family in Wilsonville, Oregon, before they moved. So I was like, Drew, you got a PWO to BYU? Let's go. He's in Columbia on his mission, and uh, Enoch's amazing. So let's go. Uh, Max, we appreciate the time. Can't wait to watch that game in the fall between you and Ty, man. It's going to be fun, and I'm going to make it up. I, I, I'm going to make it up for a game this year. Okay. So when I Let's do, I, I want I want to get up there with you guys, man. I don't want to act like I'm a big time dude. So I'll let you guys know. But <laughs> you don't have to I'll act get like up there you. In you the just fall. be yourself. We'll have a seat waiting for you on our countdown set. Heck It'll be yeah. great. Thanks, Max. Love it. Let's go.